Fuerzas! Welcome to Sunday Mass with Children. Today is the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. This Sunday marks the end of the octave of Easter. But back to Divine Mercy Sunday. Jesus asked the Church, through St. Faustina, to celebrate the special feast day of His Divine Mercy. Ah, yes! We all need God's mercy. But first, let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Divine Mercy Sunday. We know through St. Faustina that your love for us is so great. You wanted to give our souls refuge and shelter with this special feast day. We know that when we ask for your mercy and forgiveness, our hearts are open to you and to others. We thank you especially for your biggest gift of mercy, sending Jesus down to die on the cross for our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming. How much do you know about Divine Mercy Sunday? Take part in this quick quiz and find out a lot more about this special day. Let's go! Question 1. What is Divine Mercy Sunday based on? A. It's based on things that were revealed to St. Faustina Kowalska. B. It's based on the picture of Jesus with a strawberry-looking heart. C. It's based on the idea that Jesus was very merciful during Easter. That's right! Saint Faustina was a well-known saint whom Jesus communicated the message of his mercy to the whole world. He said to her, Today, I am sending you with my mercy to the people of the whole world. I do not want to punish aching mankind, but I desire to heal it, pressing it to my merciful heart. Question 2. What is the picture of the Divine Mercy? Is it A. It's Jesus with a strawberry-looking heart. B. It's Jesus with two rays of light shooting out of his heart. Or C, it's Jesus with his arms outstretched on the cross. Yup, Jesus had two rays of light, one red and one white, coming out of his heart. Saint Faustina had a vision, and even though she wasn't an artist, she painted this picture. You can see that Jesus' right hand is raised, and his left hand is pointing at his heart. Question 3. What is the name of the set of prayers devoted to the Divine Mercy? A. The Chaplain of the Divine Mercy B. The Chaplet of the Divine Mercy or C. The Chapel of the Divine Mercy The right answer is the chaplet of the Divine Mercy. Chaplet simply means a string of beads. You can use your usual rosary when you want to say the prayers for the chaplet of Divine Mercy. Final question. It's a super easy one. What time in the day should you pray the chaplet of the Divine Mercy? Is it A. After lunch at 3 p.m. B. After breakfast at 11 a.m. or C. After dinner at 9 p.m. You got it! We are to pray the Chaplet of the Divine Mercy at 3 p.m. That's the time that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. It's also known as the Hour of Great Mercy. Looks like you got many answers right! Well done! And if you didn't, you now know a lot more about Divine Mercy Sunday. Yay! Yay! Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Hey Joy, what you doing? Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Oh, hi Jerry. I was just praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet. What's that? I learned it during Catechism. It's a type of devotion to Jesus. And a devotion is? A devotion is something we do to express our love. 
Oh, so like buying flowers for someone? Um, no, not quite. It's more of a custom, something the whole community does to show their love. Like the novena or the rosary, but those are devotions to Mary. While the Divine Mercy Chaplet is a devotion to Jesus. I see. Is it complicated? No, it's really simple. I can teach you how to pray it if you want. Okay. Jesus stood among them eight days later. It was the evening of the same Sunday that Jesus was resurrected. His disciples were scared of the Jews, so they hid in a room with locked doors. But there was one disciple who was not there. Thomas. Jesus appeared to them and said, Peace be with you. And the disciples were filled with joy. Jesus told them, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, who wasn't there that day, refused to believe that Jesus had appeared unless he could actually touch Jesus' hands and side. Eight days later, after Easter Sunday, the disciples were in the room again. But this time, Thomas was there. Jesus appeared among them and he told Thomas to touch his hands and side. It was then that Thomas believed. Jesus said, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Many of us are like Thomas. We believe only when we can see or hear. But that's not faith. As the book of Hebrews tells us, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Thank you for praying the chapter with me. Of course, Joy. Although, I honestly still don't fully understand what I'm praying for. Well, we're praying for God's mercy. His mercy is overflowing and He forgives us no matter how far we stray from Him. I see, but it's not just for us, right? The prayer says, for those of the whole world. That's right. We're praying for Him to forgive our own sins and everyone else's in the whole world. That's powerful. Yep, and praying for God's mercy and compassion can remind us too to be compassionate to the people around us. There's always chances to be forgiving and loving, to not react in anger. The more we live as examples of God's love, the more people will see how great His love truly is. Cool, but are we only supposed to pray this on Divine Mercy Sunday? No, you can pray any time of the year. Awesome, I'll add it to my routine. You will notice that the Divine Mercy Sunday is linked closely to today's Gospel reading. In the reading, Thomas only believes that Jesus is real when he gets to touch his hands and side. This happens eight days after Jesus has risen and eight days after Easter Sunday. We have Divine Mercy Sunday. Even the Divine Mercy image that St. Faustina saw in her vision is the image of Jesus when he appears to his disciples. Remember that Jesus gave his disciples power to forgive or to not forgive or retain someone's sins. But what's most important about Divine Mercy Sunday is that it is a message of a loving God who is always ready to be merciful. He is always ready to forgive our sins. Only when we are forgiven, then can we also forgive those who hurt us. When we forgive, we show mercy. Let's have a look at some of our stories of God's mercy from our friends on Little Faith Steps. As we continue with our celebrations for Easter, let's take time to be grateful for God's mercy. A mercy so big that no mind, be it of man or angel, can imagine it throughout all of eternity. Amen. Amen. Every step I 
How can our Lord Jesus use someone who was young, uneducated, and poor? But he certainly did with St. Faustina Kowalska. This well-known saint was chosen by Jesus to be the missionary of the powerful message of the Divine Mercy. She was canonized as a saint in the year 2000, making her the first saint of the new millennium. St. Faustina had only three years of education and a task in the convent were the lowliest. Yet, Jesus gave her revelations and asked her to record in her notebooks God's loving message of His divine mercy. They are known today as the Diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska. There was and still is a strong movement and a great devotion to the divine mercy. That's because we will always be drawn to the simple truth of putting our trust in God's endless mercy and how we can, in turn, be merciful to others. We hope we can be like St. Faustina ever glorifying God's mercy. St. Faustina, pray for us. It is now time to set up your altar table and prepare for Holy Mass. Take a moment now to get these items and see you in a while. Oh, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag Catholic Mars at home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estella has to share with us in one Mass minute. Have you noticed that sometimes Father wears purple for Mass, sometimes red, most recently white? Does he just pick his favourite colour? Why not orange or stripes? The Church uses colour to tell us what season it is. We follow the big events in Jesus' life, his birth, death and resurrection. We celebrate his birthday and resurrection with the colour white, which reminds us of Jesus' light coming into the world. Father wears white for Christmas and Easter. But before these feasts, we purify our hearts. Father wears a dark colour, purple, to show that Lent and Advent are seasons of preparation. We see red less often. At Pentecost, it reminds us of the tongues of fire of the Holy Spirit. We also see red on the feasts of martyrs whose blood was shed for Jesus. Finally, Father wears green for ordinary time, where we think about what Jesus said and did in his daily life. Maybe green reminds us that God's love is alive and growing in our hearts. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, 
Take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learn more about the beauty of divine mercy. There's nothing like giving God our hearts and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the second Sunday of Easter, 24th April 2022, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. We offer up this Mass for all children of God, that the Lord's great act of sacrifice may inspire in us a spirit of mercy and compassion in our daily lives. Let us now rise to sing the processional hymn. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is a great joy to see everyone uh, attending this Mass, and uh, we are celebrating the second Sunday of Easter, which is also uh, Divine Mercy Sunday. So as we come together, we want to uh, continue to give thanks to God to reflect on our experience of Easter, which Easter Sunday, which we celebrated last week. We continue to reflect and give thanks for the gift of eternal life uh, that Jesus and God has given us. So we come to this Mass with all our intentions, our thanksgiving, and we offer to God, uh, especially also for people who are most in need of our prayers. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, see. 
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The faithful all used to meet by common consent in the portico of Solomon. No one else ever dared to join them, but the people were loud in their praise, and the numbers of men and women who came to believe in the Lord increased steadily. So many signs and wonders were worked among the people at the hands of the apostles that the sick were even taken out into the streets and laid on beds and sleeping mats in the hope that at least the shadow of Peter might fall across some of them as he went past. People even came crowding in from the towns round about Jerusalem, bringing with them their sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and all of them were cured. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Apocalypse. My name is John, 
And through our union in Jesus, I am your brother, and share your sufferings, your kingdom, and all you endure. I was on the island of Patmos for having preached God's word and witnessed for Jesus. It was the Lord's day, and the Spirit possessed me. And I heard a voice behind me, shouting like a trumpet. Write down all that you see in the book. I turned round to see who had spoken to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and surrounded by them, a figure like a son of man, dressed in a long robe tied at the waist with a golden girdle. When I saw him, I fell in a dead faint at his feet, but he touched me with his right hand and said, "Do not be afraid. It is I, the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now I am to live for ever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and of the underworld. Now write down all that you have see of present happenings and things that are still to come. The word of the law. Thanks be to God. Victime Pascali laudes, imolent Christiani, anius redemit oves, Christus innocens patri, reconciliavit peccatores. O sed vita due, Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, 
peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in a house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, Put your finger here, look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me, Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear friends, how many of you live in peace? Are you experiencing peace? What is peace? When we talk about peace, we talk about harmony, not fighting, no violence or aggression. There is order, we feel safe, we feel calm, free from disturbances, anxiety. So how much peace do you have right now? How many percent? 50%? More than 50? How many of you? 70% peace? 80%? Or maybe some of us have less, like 40%. How many of you? 40% peace? 30% or maybe zero. Why are you not experiencing 100% peace? It's an important question for us to ask, uh, whether young or old, why are we not experiencing 100% peace within ourselves? You see, the disciples of Jesus were not experiencing 100% peace. In fact, maybe not even 50%. Why? Because they were very, very fearful. They were like locked themselves in closed doors in a room, fearing that the enemies of Jesus, now their enemies, might come to arrest them and kill them. When Jesus was arrested and crucified on a cross, they all ran away except for one disciple. We know him as the beloved disciple of Jesus and the scholars say his name is John. One disciple together with Mother Mary and a few women so the women are more courageous than the men. Eh? The men ran away, many of them. 
And though some may believe in the resurrection, they were still fearful because they had also betrayed Jesus. So as they were not experiencing peace within themselves, the risen Christ, Jesus, who had risen from the dead, came through their closed doors and greeted them. And how did Jesus greet the disciples and everybody, and Mother Mary probably, uh, in the room that was closed? Jesus didn't say good morning, good evening, good night, no. Jesus greeted, peace be with you. And he actually repeated, peace be with you. You see, Jesus is very merciful. Even though the disciples had abandoned him and now feel quite guilty, feel bad and in distress, not experiencing peace, he didn't press them, he didn't insist that they explain to him why. Why did they run away? So Jesus was like, you know, the prodigal father, like God the Father, who invited himself. They didn't invite him into the room. Jesus invited himself into their closed room. And he offered peace to them. Now Jesus, the divine mercy, is only interested in loving them, forgiving them, curing them, healing them. To be merciful is to have a heart that desires the happiness and wellness of someone else or people around. So today, as we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, we celebrate Jesus entering the closed doors of our hearts, offering to remove from us all the fears and sinfulness and offer of peace. Why did Jesus show the wounds on the sides and hands when Thomas and the other disciples told them that they had seen the Lord, still refused to believe? Well, by showing his wounds, Jesus is encouraging the disciples not to be fearful in showing their wounds to him. He wants to assure them that they must trust in him and believe that he is really the divine mercy. Someone who understands ready to forgive, someone who wants to have peace, to give peace and happiness. So my dear friends, how much peace does Jesus offer his fearful disciples? How much? 100% peace. 100%. Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it to the full. 100% life Jesus gave us. Similarly, when he said, Peace be with you, he is saying, I have come to give you peace. Peace to the full. Jesus has given us 100% peace. But you see, we look for peace everywhere except in God. So my dear friends, Jesus has given you and I 100% peace. So you must believe and rise up from all the fears, all the stress, all the anxiety, and sometimes unnecessary anxiety. 
Jesus has given us peace to the full, but He also wants us to share and give the peace to other people. In fact, to everyone we meet. You know, but oftentimes, we may say that we are followers of Jesus. But do we live in peace? Are we resurrected people, Easter people? Are we peaceful people? If we are, then we will not go around trying to start a war or creating a war with anyone else, whether it is between countries like what you see in Europe or sometime at home. Eh? We talk like we are having war also. Sometimes the parents talk to one another, communicating like they are having a war in Europe. Sometimes the children and the parents also talk like they're having a big war, like a nuclear war. And it's terrible. It's very, very stressful. Eh? And I came across families like this. Maybe they are not aware. It has become the way of communicating. Very negative. Eh? And then they get very stressed and they get sick. And then the parents, the father will lose all their hair without knowing why. So it's important for us to live in peace. The world will be a better place if we all tap the peace, the 100% peace that Jesus has already given to you and I. So every time when we attend Mass, the greeting is, Peace be with you. Many times. And we need to receive this peace that God has already given us when God breathed life into us. God gives us life that we may be life-giving. So Jesus gives us peace that we may also be peace-loving and peace-giving, not life-destroying. So God gives us life and peace not just for ourselves, but also with a mission to share it with others. So there are two things I want you to, I would like to invite you to reflect how are you going to be aware always of the 100% peace that God has given you? How are you going to live in peace? So, we can be aware only when we spend time, quiet time with the Lord. And that is called prayer. Prayer is not just telling God what to do. Prayer is not just saying lots of words without understanding or mean what we say. Prayer is being aware that you're in the presence of God. Just relax, close your eyes, be calm, and tell the Lord, Here I am in your presence. You know? And when you do that, you will experience the peace of the risen Christ. And then you will know, you will hear God speaking to you. So the question, how are you going to live in peace? Peace when you make efforts to be mindful in our words as well as in our actions and communicate and relate with others in positive ways. So two questions. How are you going to be aware always of the 100% peace that the Lord has given you? And how are you going to live in peace today and every here and now? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. 
for our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we gather to celebrate the mystery of our salvation in Jesus Christ, let us trust in God's merciful love as we bring Him our needs and those of the world. The response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our religious leaders, Pope Francis, Archbishop William Go, all priests and clergy, we pray that they be kept protected and grant them the grace of health and the strength to carry the cross with the suffering Christ and that they may continue to serve with glad and generous hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for active participation and the grace of openness towards one another so that the synodal process, as initiated by Pope Francis, may renew our commitment to walk with one another towards the vision of God for His Church in Singapore. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of every nation, we pray that leaders of government will work to ensure the peace and security of their country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Church and the newly baptized, we pray that we may rededicate ourselves to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy as we grow in trust of the risen Lord who offers forgiveness and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the people in Ukraine and Russia and other war-torn countries throughout the world, we pray the wisdom of God will guide the leaders of the nations in their decisions so that hatred, violence and war may cease. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have went before us, we pray that through your cross and resurrection by which death is conquered, they may be brought to the glory of God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment for our personal intentions and the intentions of our family and friends who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, the resurrection of your Son gives us new hope. May we live in that hope always. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is a true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant we shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim the death, O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My dear friends, as you attend this online Mass and not receiving communion physically, face to face, I invite you to be fully united with Jesus, to be in communion with Him, as you remain silent and open your hearts, your mind and your souls to Jesus, bread broken for you. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. So thank you for uh, attending this Mass. It's very nice to see all of you. And I'm also aware that it's not just the children attending. Some of us who are elderly who cannot go to church or, you know, physically uh, challenging to go to church, uh, you have been attending uh, this Mass uh, for children. And, but you are praying also for all the children and I also ask the children to pray for all of you. Eh? So may you have a very uh, joyful, hopeful, peaceful and loving Easter uh, as we continue to celebrate Easter for the next few weeks. And be Easter people wherever you go, at home or outside. So we continue to support one another as believers of the Lord Jesus who gives us peace. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. The word catechesis actually means echoing the faith, handing down the faith. What the apostles learn from Christ, not just the knowledge, but the encounter of God, is it transforming your life? Christianity is about a relationship. It's not whether they have received the sacraments. It's about belonging. Have they really encountered the Lord? So catechesis for me, comes after being called. That's why Jesus first called them to be with Him and then Jesus started to disciple them. I'm Michael. This is my son, Gabriel. Uh, both of us are serving at Church of the Risen Christ as catechists. Before I joined the catechists, actually I was with the RCIA. 
And I believe whether I'm in the RCIA or whether I'm in the catechist, I grow in my faith because I learn together with the children what they learn as well. My father was a, was a big influence on me. Whenever I see him with his own youth, I would think to myself how amazing it would be if I could have that same experience. And when I joined, I realised that God did not disappoint. I find that it's a very meaningful way to serve the Lord and to serve my brothers and sisters. And essentially, catechesis is more than teaching Jesus as a subject. It's helping the young person or even an adult to forge this relationship to fall in love with Jesus, actually. So the main work of OFC, we divide it into children and youth catechesis, as well as the RCIA. The first role that we have is to come up with the catechetical program, the overall curriculum, as well as then the session outlines. For the RCIA, every parish does it differently. But we also want to make sure that the RCIA has general guidelines in terms of the topics that need to be covered, formation of the RCIA core team, the sponsors. The other focus would be the formation of the catechists. The catechists for children, for youths, for adults, providing more tools to the catechists so that they have really this bag of styles of teaching to help engage the young person. We may even introduce certain causes or introduce certain pedagogies or, or certain methods of effective press space. We are also with the parents to grow their capacity to be better at what they do, what they are called to. And we also have things like our catechist retreats, our recollections, which we do to supplement our catechists in terms of their own personal faith life. We also currently do have a lot of our children, even adults, with special needs. The catechists have a different training to integrate them into the mainstream classes. It's a good learning process for the rest of the young people to learn compassion, to learn how can we be walking with each other on this journey. Therefore, catechesis always happen in the community. It is in the community that actually we invite in the person of Christ. So, a catechist today is the one who journeys with them, who leads them to Jesus, who helps them to discover Jesus as the answer to what they're searching for in life. By virtue of our baptism, we are called to share the good news right, with whoever we meet. We are not just their teacher, we are first and foremost their steward as Christ has served us and we have served them, that they would go out and serve others as well. You never walk alone. Christ always walks with me, but it's also an invitation for me to always walk with people. Love the Lord and share it. It's time to share good news. And the best news is Jesus. <laughs>